just walked in. Go get him. Well, Todd Martin, number 10 in all your glory. Many have called me that, yes. I'm sure they have. Well, come on, Ethel's waiting for you. Oh, right, well, this way. she can take a number and stand in line, Erica. I'm very busy. Are you kidding? Are you endangering your number 10 status? I can't believe you would let yourself go this way. Like what? So dull, so lifeless, so limp. You are in big trouble. Eric, what the hell are you talking about? Okay, Ted, look, we're doing a shampoo comparison. My wonderful brand new shampoo, uh, as it as it holds up against all the other terrible top salons. Uh, no, 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 Erica, look, I, I'd love to help you out, but I'm really busy today. I know, I can't but you have to look great while you're doing all your things. Now, come on, come on, here's Ethel. I'm you're serious, next. I can't. Here he is. Oh, be still, my heart. All right, stud, sit down. <laughs> Forget about the question. Sky. Tad, hi. I've been looking all over for you. So I see you escaped the test. By the hair of my chinny chin chin. Are we still off tonight? And that's why I was looking for you. See, something's come up. Oh no. No, no, I'm still gonna be there. It's just I've, I've got to meet a client for drinks, so I'm gonna be a little late. Well, maybe we should just meet at Kelly's then, because it might be better than you if coming I, over. Instead of me stopping by the war zone at Shea Chandler, I know. I'd probably survive to make it to Kelly's if I didn't run across your father. It's right at the roof, I'm sure of it. Well, there you are. Enjoy. Thank you. Oh, we're certainly going to try. David, David, how's your mother? She's very good, thank you. Oh, please tell her I say hello. It's all in your head. Darling, it is not in my head. Can't be. And I say that it is. Ruth, it's impossible. He's learned his lesson with Sky. Well, then maybe he's using ah. her so that he can. What? You mean so he can beat Dixie? Well, every time he goes over to the Chandlers, it's going to be perfectly normal for him to bump into her. No, that can't be it. Now he's sworn he's going to leave her alone. Oh, yeah, right. No, it can't be Dixie. Ah. Couple now. No, I mean it. I mean it. And together and in love all these years. What is your secret? Oh, I guess we managed to stick it out because neither one of us has ever done anything rash. <laughs> your nose feeling all right, Mom? Keep dishing it out like that, you'll be pole vaulting in the parking lot after dinner. Oh. Oh. Oh, I, I thought you were going to go oh. early. Oh, I thought I was going to be by myself tonight. Oh, this is the best surprise you could have given me. Do you want me to ask Mr. Schindler to fix you some supper, or do you feel like going out? I don't know, no, no, I've got to work. But he's in, Adam, uh, I... in my study. I'm sorry. Oh, Adam, wait, wait, come on. I mean, I haven't seen you all day. I haven't seen you since breakfast. I've been so lonely. I mean, can't you please say... Dixie, I... I love you. Don't go. You're saying no to a Paris conservatory. I know that it's hard to... I to hold the cards. And then I would sit by her side and keep score, and we would just talk about everything under the sun. Do you ever do that with the, the sky, you know? Sit around and play cards and everything? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, sure, sure. Oh. Mom and I just love to play games. Sometimes we just get up and we sing and dance and everything. Yes. What? <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. I can't believe you. You kept kings again, Adam. You never should keep kings. They count the most. I don't care. I like kings. I'm winning. No more, no. Oh, come no, no, on. No. I can't, I can't concentrate on cards. My mind is full of business. I have reading to do. I... Oh, Adam, wait. Don't leave me alone. Look, if you have to study, just stay here, okay? Don't go into your study. I mean, I get so lonely. <sighs> can't you keep me company? As you wish. Thank you. Oh. You know, Will and I, we used to play double solitaire all the time. Mama didn't like it very much, though, because sometimes Will would get really rough and he'd just, like, toss the cards around on the floor and everything. Dixie. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. So quiet. 
16 hours the servants night off. Guy and Karen went to uh, Nico's opening. Dixie, I'm working here. Don't... Please. Oh. <laughs> How much longer do you think that you'll be working? Uh, I, don't, I have no idea. It's, it's hard to say. You think you might be finished soon? Well, because if it's soon, you know, we, we could go to the opening. Ted uh, and Will and, 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 and Sky is going to be there. I'm, I'm sure a lot of your friends, too, I bet. You're not going to finish soon? No. Oh. Well, you know what? I think you should take a break. I mean, you work entirely too hard. I mean, we could just go for an hour or so. What do you say? Dixie, I'm not going anywhere. I've had a very hard day, and I've got a lot of work to do. Oh. Well, that's okay. I mean, I, I understand. Thank you. I'll be quiet. Oh. Dixie. It's, uh... Oh. Marsha, you know it's her day off, you know. Look, I know right where it is in the pantry. I will go fix it. Ah, oh, thank you, darling. Thank you. How kind, Miss. Yes. Yeah. Saul, it's Adam. Call me right back. I'm at home. Uh, yes, hello. Oh, Saul, how are you doing? What can I do for you? Oh, is that, oh, is that, is that so? Yes, of course, I'll be right there. Oh, the Singapore deal just hit the skids. Oh. Yeah. Do you have to go? Yes, I may be home late. Oh, Adam, oh. No, no one can handle it but me. Uh, don't, don't wait up on Congratulations. Our order, quite an opening. Thanks, Tad. Oh, congratulations. Not having fun, Tad. Well, since it can't possibly be the company you're keeping, naming me your date, it's, it's got to be something. Does my smile look coarse? You know, we can talk about it. There's nothing to talk about. Do I hear any complaints? No, none at all. This is having a much better time than my day it is. And this is Going on here. Oh, 
You got my nose. Oh, sure. I've had enough of you disrupting our lives. You stay away from Dixie. When you want the morning, I mean it. Stop it, Dixie. Touch me again. Dad, why don't we go there? You with him? Yeah, I will. Adam, I want to go home. You could do better. Adam, take me home. Uh, now, please. All right. Just stay away from my wife. Oh, I love it when that vein in his forehead just bulges and pulsates like that. You can have a stroke. <laughs> She's Adam's wife now. I know that, damn it. You think, uh -huh. You've got to respect his wishes. Look, I didn't hit him, right? I didn't go after him. How many times do I have to tell you people, Dixie and I are just friends? That's it. That's it. It's not the way it looked on the dance floor. It's not the way it looked, Dad. Well, your mother and I care. The last thing you need now is to get involved with a married woman, particularly a pregnant one. Why don't you just take a walk and cool off? Why don't you two just leave me alone, all right? I'll tell you something. If people in this town cared more about the way things are, so the way they looked, we'd all be a hell of a lot happier. I'd be jealous. And gentlemen, like a daughter, and then for you to say that I cannot see him or speak to him is absolutely ridiculous. Are you finished? Are you quite finished? It is just not fair. Tad was my friend before we got married. Why can't he be my friend now? Because Mrs. Adam Chandler has a position to uphold. She does not prance around in nightclubs with snakes like Tad Martin. Tad Martin is not a snake. Ask Sky. Ask your own daughter. Sky will say he's not my, a snake. My own daughter has a very short memory. I do not. Sweetheart, there is not much in this world that I would not do to please you, but turn my back on a friend for absolutely no reason. I will not do it. And if that makes you mad at me, I am just sorry. Do you have any idea how seeing you with another man makes me feel inside. I loved you so much. I was I was worried sick when I came home and I could and I found you gone. And then to walk in that club and see you with Dad. Oh, oh. sweetheart, no. I, I didn't mean to hurt you. No, no, no. It makes me doubt everything you've ever said to me. Every single word that you have oh. ever said. No. Yes. 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 Shouldn't. Shouldn't our marriage be your first priority? Sh am I wrong here? Shouldn't you be concentrating on us and that fine, healthy son you're giving birth to? You know that you and the baby are the most important thing to me. No, I don't know that. No, do I know that? No, I'm not sure I do. I'm not sure I do. I love you. I love only you. What about Ted? Ted doesn't give a hoot about me, okay? Except his friends. I have nothing to fear. I swear it. Tad, you don't have to walk from the sky. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm sure. I have ballet parts.
Anyway, darling, I'm awfully glad you could join us. For reasons that I cannot fathom, your brother does look up to you. Yeah, a real ultramaroon. What? Never mind. Look, Ma, I've been thinking about the little conversation we had at the hospital, you know, the advice you gave me. And I just, well, I want you both to know that I successfully put Dixie Cooney behind me. No, don't look at me that way. I'm serious now. If she wants to be married to Adam Chandler, then the only thing I can do is respect the sanctity of her marriage. Do you really mean that? Dad, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hey, you, you been avoiding me? Why don't you relax there on the steps? We can cool off that way. I'm sure Joey would take very good care of you. <laughs> he looks like he's having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, didn't, I didn't bring my suit. Well, not that I would be able to get into it anyway. <laughs> Are you here alone? Yeah, for now, but um, Adam will be joining me momentarily. Well, that's, that's very nice. Yeah. Dad? They're all the freaking monkeys, Mom. Uh, Joe, darling, I think maybe it's time that we should get <clears> okay? <throat> All right. Oh, well, it's very good to see you again. Good to see you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Uh, look, uh, Mom, hmm? uh, why don't you and Dad go on home? I'm, I'm going to stick around and abuse Joey for a while. But that doesn't mean your resolve is wavering. No, not at all. No, Joey said he, he needed some advice about some young woman. Mm -hmm. Joey is working. Talk to him at home. Well, it's Dad's decision. He's, he's the one who's going to have to stick to it. Come on down. Well, no, no, just, just a second here, all right? Don't worry about Dixie. I'm serious, you know? She's in love with Adam Chandler. That's all the protection she needs from me. Mm -hmm. We'll see you later. Are you in luck? I don't know, am I? See that girl over there? What girl over there? The one all by herself? Without a tan line? She's healthy. Yeah, apparently she thinks you're healthy, too. She's been asking a lot of questions about you. She asked me if I knew you, right? Normally, in a situation like that, I would lie, okay? But, uh, she's looking at you. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? You gonna stand here? You gonna go over there before some other healthy guy takes her over? What do you want me to do, throw her over my shoulder? Thanks, but no thanks. What? Are you going to pass up prime real estate like that for, for a married woman, for a pregnant married... Shut up. What's wrong with you? Why don't you go back to your job, huh? Save a life, preferably your own. I know how it is to lose somebody. You're right. Like, believe me, I do. But you got to put it behind you. You got to move on, man. I'll tell you something. I know about moving on, okay? I know plenty about moving on. As far as Dixie Cooney and I are concerned, I moved. I mean, we're, we were friends, but that's it. I mean, we're, we're over. Finished. That's all she wrote. Capish? Yeah, right. Get out of here. Where's the mogul? Oh, you mean Adam? Well, he's he's very busy. Yeah, well, uh, you want some company while you wait? That's okay. I'm sure he's he's gonna be along any minute. Yeah, yeah, and it would uh, probably be a little awkward, so we should, you know. No, it's just, you know, I'm sure you just got better things to do than hold my hand. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hey, uh, look, there's somebody I've got to talk to. So, uh, oh, good luck. Yeah. Okay, okay go ahead. Bye. You got a minute? Sure. Good, because I need a cover. Might this have anything to do with the latest Mrs. Chandler? No, it has nothing to do with the latest Mrs. Chandler. I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a case, all right? <laughs> the only case I see around here is the one you have for Dixie. You know, you could at least put a newspaper in front of your face. Go blow up your shorts. She's a friend, all right? You know, it must be an awful disadvantage to be a private detective and wear your heart on your sleeve. Could you keep your voice down? All right, listen, do you think it's fair that that kid should have Adam Chandler as a father? 
Darling, there is a lot more interest here than just the baby. You are forgetting that I know what you no, like no, when you, you want someone. Oh, yes, I do. Look, came... she's a nice kid, and he's loathsome. I'm not getting on your case, well, all right? That's really big of you. Thanks a lot. Speaking of loathsome, how's Travis doing, huh? Oh, we hit the trick question here. There we go. There's the button, huh? Oh. You know you're blushing? <laughs> You're blushing. blushing. I am not. You're blushing. Either you're blushing or you just got the world's quickest attack of hives. Uh -huh. so what's this supposed to mean? You two are what? You're progressing? Things are moving along nicely, huh? Always the investigator, huh? Well, inquiring minds want to know. None of that friends are supposed to talk to each other, remember well, that? friends are exactly what Travis and I are. Right. You got that? Uh -huh. Pals. We're co-workers. Oh, oh, sure. Silly me. How could I not recognize a syndrome? Oh, shut up. So? So? I was, um, I was just thinking how incredible it must be to contain a life in yourself. A separate life, you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is a miracle. You're thinking about children? What is so miraculous about that? You know, Pat, so sensitive sometimes. Look, after Laura died, I didn't want to see children, let alone think about them. But, you know, I, it just was too painful to remind her the loss and the guilt. I have gotten much better. I have spent time with Bianca, and she's very special, you know. I've had some nice times. Sweet. I actually find myself marveling at the whole process. The miracle of childbirth the is pretty incredible. The miracle of childbirth. Yeah. You know what I hear? I hear your biological clock doing 90 to 55 mile an hour zone. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, well, I, I, I never pictured you as a mother, but no, oh, I could see it. No, I am not thinking of having one. Oh, really? After a speech like that, you're sure there's no uh, plans of marriage in the uh, near future there, huh? Ted, come on. No, of course not. Travis and I are close. No, of course not. Oh, no. No, well, that's so way long far off. Yes, it. Sure, yeah, that, I'm not idea. pushing you into it. No, not me. I mean, stranger things have happened. I'll give you that, but I mean, it would be kind of romantic marrying Travis <laughs> again. <laughs> I mean, as if, you know, you, there is just that one person you're always supposed to Barbara, be with. Barbara, you know? take it easy. Just, just cool down, okay? Like I said, I'm not on your case. Like the song, like the song says, you know, don't worry. Be happy. It's just too distressing that the club has relaxed its standards. Nothing but a business these days. I can remember when a person like Dixie Chandler would have been refused entry. <laughs> they would have thrown out the old lecher of himself. Oh, yes, money or no money, the whole thing is just too tawdry. Oh. Talk about a servant girl's mistake. Well, <laughs> this one has absolutely no scruples. Can you imagine pretending to be friend Brooke and then turning right around her without a thought? Ruining her marriage, after all Brooke has been through. Mrs. Wallingford, no matter what you may think of me, I admired Brooke and I respected her. Respected her? Really? Well, now you've proved that, haven't you? I was so sorry that she was hurt, okay? I cried myself to, to sleep for days. I hope that's true. I'm amazed you have the gall to show yourself in here. Everyone in Pine Valley knows what you really are. I don't think you know who I am. I don't think you know how I feel or uh, what I think. I think I know one thing, my dear. You'll make a perfect addition to the lurid Chandra clan. You'll <laughs> fit in like a glove. But on second thought, it strikes me that you probably will get your just rewards. Almost enough punishment just living with Adam, that hound of hell. Certainly don't expect to be accepted by good society and don't expect any respect from the decent people of Pine Valley. Oh, that's a switch. What would you two wrinkled piranha know about the decent people of Pine Valley? Well, just let me go. Let me go. In the first place, don't ever, ever let those two get to you. You're right, Dad. I don't belong around morally upstanding people. Don't give me a break. What do you think they know about being morally upstanding? Those two? Let me tell you, Enid Nelson, right? Enid Nelson is married to her husband for years. He looks at her three times, once for each kid. That was enough. The other guy's a stiff. He's dead and gone, right? She runs around acting like they were the king and queen of England. Truth is, her own family hates her guts, including her son, who was my brother-in-law. Phoebe. Oh, Phoebe. Phoebe should be in comic books. She married her second husband. He was, he was right out of the carnival. He was a con man. And her third husband, he was decades younger than she was. 
He was so desperate to get his hands on her money, he almost murdered her doing it. I know because I saved her life. Is that really true? Yeah, I want it. I swear. Listen, I could tell you stories that would make Junior do handstands. Hmm. That, that's, that's funny, but <laughs> it doesn't excuse what I did. The only thing you did was fall in love. That's it. Now, granted, I mean, you fell in love with Adam Chandler. Nobody can understand that. But you basically were manipulated by your own heart. I would think it would be a uh, blessing to be like you. I mean, you're young. You're beautiful. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're sensitive and you're emotional, you're spontaneous. <laughs> you're everything in life that those two gas bags will, will never, ever be. <laughs> if you were in their sensible shoes, we'd probably want to kill you, too. <laughs> You're wonderful, you know that? I mean, you are a really wonderful person. Put it back. Hey, 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 hey! Ah, ah. What's that? Oh, candy bars for dessert tomorrow. Go ahead. Delicious. I don't care. Here, you can see it for me. Keep it up. I want ketchup and I want mustard. Doesn't Adam ever feed you? Of course he feeds me. I'm supposed to make him for lunch. I mean, it's his breakfast. Well, isn't that kind of rough on Junior? I mean, it's not a little Tuta's fault Adam's not a table. Well, if you're so concerned, I'll simply donate your half of the french fries. Okay. Oh, shoot. What's wrong? Why are you slowing down? I just, I just figured out, I don't know how I'm getting home. Oh, what, you gonna eat and run? Well, yeah, Adam was supposed to pick me up. I don't, I guess he forgot, or he, something important must happen, emergency or something, you know? Mm-hmm. There's no mystery, I'll drive you home. No, no, Ted, that's okay, I mean, you don't have to do that. Why not? I don't think Adam would like it. He's the one who ditched you in the first place. Who gives a damn what he likes? Well, I do. He's my husband. He's very jealous. Of me? Well, look, I tried to explain to him that we don't care about each other that way, okay? He just, um, just wouldn't hear it. I just don't want there to be any trouble, you know? Okay. There won't be. We'll pull in. If his car's in the driveway, I'll take off. Okay. On one condition. Scared the hell out of me. Tell me hitchhiked home. No, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. I want you to do it. That's my condition. Okay? The deal? Come on. <laughs> you know you want to do it. Come on. There you go. All right, here's the deal. All right. Oh, uh, Dixie, I've been looking for you all over town. Adam had to go somewhere, and he's not going to be back until very late. That poor man's been working himself to death since the wedding. Well, um, Tad, what'd you say for dinner? Depends. What do we have? <laughs> well, I don't know, but I will ask Mr. Schindler to make something absolutely wonderful. I accept. Great. All right, I'll be right back, okay? okay. Hot, isn't it? I'm off. Uh, I have to help a friend move. Marcia? Yes. I put the flowers in Mrs. Chandler's room. And you got the blue coverlet from the cleaners? And put that into Mr. Chandler's room. Thanks. Sure. Uh, excuse me, but does Mr. Chandler snore, or do rich people enjoy their privacy more than we common folk? Mr. Chandler likes his privacy. He's a very private man. Yes, but uh, he and Brooke had the same bedroom, didn't they? They really have a lot to do. Well, we are having French meatloaf. <laughs> At least that's the way the cook explained it. Dixie, I'm so sorry. Um, Dad, I'm glad you like meatloaf, but I'm not sure that's the way to express your appreciation. 
You and Adam have separate bedrooms. So what if we do? Then why the hell didn't you tell me it, it, it wasn't a real marriage? 